Lots of people I talk to want to do their bit in responding to climate change, in protecting the environment, in reducing the risk of fossil fuel emissions. And I think that 2025 could be a year when we make real progress in, making, in reducing emissions in the UK. So, in this video, I'm going to talk through the five things that I think that you could do in 2025 to reduce your emissions and to respond, respond to climate change. I'm sure there'll be loads that I've missed. If I've missed anything, drop me a comment below about what we could do in 2025. Okay, so first thing, number one, I think could be to make a plan. A plan for what? A, a plan to use less fossil fuels for heating. So what could this look like? Well, it is fairly nuanced. Each of us live in different bespoke homes on a variety of streets with a variety of needs. But for most of us, Heating will mean that we have a white box in the corner of a room that burns natural gas, we should probably call it fossil gas, there's nothing natural about it, to heat water in a radiator circuit. If you don't have that set up, you are the exception rather than the rule. And ultimately, we need to stop burning stuff for heat in our homes. And the main tool that we have to, to do this, to stop burning stuff, would be to install a heat pump. A heat pump, if sized correctly, uh, if the radiator is sized correctly and if it's designed and installed well, can heat any home. And in heating any home, we'll reduce emissions linked to heating by two thirds at day one and give a home a path to very low emissions as the grid continues to decarbonize. The problem with heat pumps is that they can be time consuming and costly to install, which is why we need to make a plan. We don't tend to want to replace a gas boiler ever at least until it breaks and we need an emergency replacement. And unfortunately, there won't be many, uh, maybe any installers that will be able to upgrade a heating system to install a heat pump in an emergency. So we need to be ready to replace, or we need to be proactive to replace in advance of need. So over the next year, I would encourage you to do the work to get ready for a heat pump installation. This may mean reading up online, it might mean watching a few videos from people that have already been through the process here on YouTube and, and there are a bunch of good, good channels that I'll link to below. And it may mean getting some quotes from an installer. There are plenty of installers out there. Have a look in the, at the links in my description. And I did a video a while back on the seven steps that you could take to install a heat pump. So have a look at that here, I guess. To be fully ready, you may need to pay some kind of deposit to facilitate an installer doing a heat loss survey. But with that survey, with a proposed system design and with an installer ready to go, you've done the hard work and you just need to say yes to the proposals when you are ready. A heat pump would give you a step change in emissions and it would help you pave the way to a zero emissions life. Okay, so number two, the second thing that I think you could do to respond to climate change in 2025 is again to make a plan to stop burning fossil fuels, but for thi but this time burning fossil fuels as we travel around. So what do I mean by that? Well, miles driven in a fossil car are some of the highest emissions miles that we have as we travel around our communities. Both the CO2 emissions and the particulates and gases that contribute to poor air quality. So moving away from a fossil car benefits all of us in the community that you live in. And this uh, plan could have a few steps, excuse the pun, um, but we could decide to travel more slowly, walking short distances or riding longer ones. We could choose to leave the car at home and take a bus. And that might not be perfectly convenient for you, um, but we could do it. Or we could choose to take a train instead of a long distance car journey. But in many cases, we will need to drive. So in 2025, we could make the plan to go electric. This plan could be looking to buy a new car outright if you had the cash to splash. It could be a new car bought on finance or leased from a dealership or through a salary sacrifice scheme at work. And increasingly, it could be a second-hand car bought outright, financed or leased. There are now a lot of options that would meet most of our requirements for driving in most settings. Electric vehicles are likely to be cheaper to, to maintain and cheaper to run. Charging infrastructure, often the excuse for not going electric, is almost ubiquitous now and getting more and more common. So, 2025, let's make a plan to ditch fossil fuels to drive and go electric. 
And if you're thinking that running an old fossil vehicle into the ground is more sustainable, simply it isn't. It's just locking in high emissions for the rest of that car's useful life. Get it sold or get it scrapped, recycle materials and start driving much more cleanly. I did a video about all this uh, way too long ago about whether I would get an EV. So in 2025, I promise it's going to happen. So let's make a plan to stop burning stuff for travel by walking, biking, busing, and if we need, going electric. Okay, the third thing that we could do to help respond to climate change is to think about when you're using electricity on a day-to-day. -day. With the increase in what we call intermittent generation, so wind and solar power, we have more electricity generation on windy and sunny days and less during still and dark times. I did a video earlier this year a little bit about this uh, and the concept of Dunkelflaut and how we might respond to those still and dark times in the future. Um, but the variability of renewable generation today means that the price of electricity changes almost constantly. Stronger winds, cheaper electricity. And this means that many companies are now offering novel time of use tariffs that will try and influence you to use electricity at different times. That might be either when we know demand is going to be low, so maybe overnight, we might have cheap electricity. Or when we know demand is going to be high, so late afternoon or early evening when people get home from work, we might have more expensive electricity. Or when we might be able to predict low cost electricity when, for example, it's forecast for the wind to blow strongly. And of the energy companies coming up with this kind of variable tariffs, I tend to think that Octopus is the most interesting or ambitious. They've got different tariffs to encourage overnight electric vehicle charging or using a heat pump to heat hot water at certain times of the day. Um, and their agile tariff even changes every half hour of every day. They even have an export tariff for solar PV or battery owners. That means you could buy low and sell high each day. And really each of these tariffs, they're, they're trying to influence you and to try and influence when you use electricity. If we can avoid the peaks of demand or utilize the peaks of wind generation, we can ensure that we're using cheap electricity and importantly, lower CO2 electricity on the day to day. And that's not for everyone. If the variability of the of a tariff doesn't suit your lifestyle and you wanted a fixed rate, you could still do your part too by thinking about when, uh, when you use your electricity, when you charge your car, when you heat hot water, um, when you put a dishwasher or washing machine on. The simple rule is to try to avoid the 4 to 7 p.m. peak and maybe to do your washing on a windy day so you can dry it outside too. There are lots of apps and websites and tools that can assist you in working out when is the optimum time to use electricity at the lowest cost or the lowest carbon time. And Octopus and others have certain schemes that kind of help make this a game. But other than the game and the potential savings you can make on electricity costs, you might not really notice the impact of this other than helping the grid be that small percentage cleaner over the next few years. But still, if we all responded to signals like the wind or the peaks in our day-to-day -day use, this would be a very positive supporting mechanism for a, for a grid transitioning away from fossil fuels. So let's be clear when we're using electricity. My fourth step uh, you could take in 25 is simply to talk. Catherine Hayhoe, who's a climate scientist and communicator, explains that talking about climate change is, is one of the most, if not the most important thing that you can do in climate action. She's written a book on it and she's done a great TED talk on it. So what could that look like? What could talking about climate action mean? Well, it could, it could be a range of things depending on your situation. It could mean talking about the risks of climate change, talking about climate action, talking about specific campaigns, talking about your plan to get a heat pump in 2025, or your plan to get an EV, or to use a bike more. And any of these topics can be incredibly powerful in multiplying your actions and helping people move towards lower emissions in their own lives, in their communities, and in their workplaces. So this could mean a conversation with family or friends. It could mean organizing a speaker for a community group if you did want someone to speak at a community event, um, then get in touch. It could be something that I contribute to in the future. It could mean joining a group in your workplace or school. Uh, it could be a chat at your sports club or at your front gate. Whatever you can do will help move us all down the line to a more sustainable future. It could be as simple as, 
I saw a video about heat pumps on YouTube the other day. Or did you see that David Attenborough documentary about the planet? Or have you even driven an EV yet? They're so much fun. So in 2025, let's talk more. And finally, my fifth step for 2025 is about the food that we eat. And this one tends to make people a bit sensitive, a bit nervous, a bit defensive. So to begin with, don't worry, I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life and what you can and can't do. But I'm gonna explain that certain food choices are more impactful than others. First, meat. I'm not expecting you to go vegan tomorrow. I'm not vegan, but I eat meat for a treat and I try to use less dairy in my day to day. And in doing so, I eat much more interesting recipes. And I think that I enjoy the meat that I do eat even more. I've gone from eating chicken with something or beef mince with something else to reading recipes from Anna Jones uh, or Mira Soda or and lots of other great uh, uh, chefs that wouldn't be improved by meat at all. So simply, I'm suggesting that you could eat less meat. That could be smaller portions. It could be meat free days. It could mean trying oat milk rather than cow's milk in your cereal. And then if you do still want to eat meat, the choice of the type of meat is still important. If you do want to eat meat, choosing a chicken burger over a beef burger would be much lower greenhouse gas emissions. Actually, a pork chop could be better than a lamb kebab. The decisions that we make can have a big impact on the environment. So if beef is your thing, you should save that up, uh, up that steak for a special occasion. You should kill the fattened calf once a year to celebrate rather than once a month or once a week. If you want to know the detail on meat choices and what might be more sustainable uh, decision to make, our world and data has got this great graph that can really help you think through the impact of certain choices linked to meat. Choose a less impactful meat or a meat substitute or just plant-based foods instead. If bacon, if a bacon sandwich is your thing, again, go from your twice a week visit to Greg's to once a week and swap out with a vegan sausage roll instead. There are decisions that we can make on a day-to-day -day basis that would impact the world around us. So they are my five ways to impact on climate change in 2025. Number one, make a plan to stop burning fossil fuels for heat, which may mean a plan to install a heat pump. Number two, make a plan to stop burning fossil fuels for transport, which could mean getting a bus pass. It could mean dusting off your bike or getting an electric vehicle. Number three, be conscious of the weather and the time that you, you use electricity. Avoid the late afternoon. Do your washing on a windy day. And if you want to make it fun, join Octopus and one of their snazzy tariffs. That could mean you save some money too. Number four, talk about climate change. Talk about climate action and talk about the steps that you are making in your own life. And number five, eat less meat and move down that meat impact league with your choices. If we were able to take those five steps, then we'd be having a meaningful impact in our own lives and helping broadly reduce emissions in our communities, in the UK and around the world. So what do you reckon? Have I missed something else impactful? Um, what other things that might, might you aim to do in 2025 in terms of climate action? I should say I'm recording this the week before Christmas. I've really enjoyed making videos on YouTube this year. It's been brilliant to engage with so many of you on climate action, on heat pumps, on low carbon technology, all that kind of stuff. In this last year, in 2024, I've made nearly 30 videos and I've had nearly 500,000 views and had a bunch of comments from people who've started their heat pump journey and wanted to let me know. Engaging with people on here helps encourage me to keep making videos. So thank you for those that comment. I hope you have a great Christmas and a happy new year. See you in 2025.